usually do that. I'll meet them in course of time. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Jaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rubyas Chakripa Sindhu Bhaiva Chapati Tanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our study of Bhakti Shastri and this is unit three, is it? Guru Maharaj, unit two, Guru Maharaj. Oh, unit, unit two. Unit two, okay. All right, anyway, today, lesson one, we're on Bhagavad Gita, chapter seven to chapter twelve. Right? So, lesson one, we've called it Maya Sattamana. Those of you who are familiar, with the seventh chapter, first verse, you may know this verse. Hmm? Okay, first of all, what we want to achieve in the course of this lesson. We should be able to explain the significance of Maya Sakta Mana in relation to Krishna's instructions, based on the first six chapters. And then secondly, the significance of yatatam apisiddhanam in relation to Krishna's instructions on the yoga system outlined in previous chapter. And third thing, why a conditioned soul is called nityabhada with reference to Sanskrit of 714. So this is our three objectives for this lesson today, not a very great endeavor. Is everyone okay? Are you able to see the slideshow? Yes. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. okay, good. If you have any questions in the course of time, then, you know, just put your hand up and uh, Padmaloch and Prabhu will tell me that someone's raised their hand and we'll be happy to hear your question. You know, so don't mind, I don't mind if you interrupt, if you raise your hands and they'll be happy to take questions. We don't need to wait till the end. You can, as we go let, as we go on, you can question. So Bhagavad Gita in three portions, the first six chapters describing Karma Yoga, the yoga of action, by yoga, by action, of yoga will come to bhakti. And then the section we're looking at today, we're beginning, at, beginning today, chapter 7 to 12, we're going to hear about bhakti yoga. And the final section, jnana yoga. Knowledge, by no, the yoga of knowledge will come to devotion. The goal of knowledge is to come to devotion, the goal of activity is to come to devotion, so the main portion of the Bhagavad Gita is right here in the middle of the book, Bhakti Yoga. Sometimes people think, oh, the Bhakti should be at the end. But Krishna has put it in the middle. He's covered it. Krishna is very clever. Okay. Would somebody like to read for me, please? Hare Krishna Mahesh. Yes, go ahead. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7 to 12. The Bhagavad Gita is divided into three portions. The first six chapters, the second six chapters, and the third six chapters. Actually, just like this book, there are two hot covers. And in the middle, there is the, there is the substance. Writing, substance writing. So the first six chapters, they are just like two coverings. Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga. And in the middle six chapter, 
well protected. That is Bhakti Yoga. Bhaul Gita 6.47, Ahmedabad, December 12, 1972. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. So, Srila Prabhupada is explaining to us how Krishna put the bhakti in the middle to protect it. Right? So, you finished the first six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. Who was teaching? Uh, Dr. Go Kishori Mataji. Dr. Who? Gop Kishori Mataji Gopkish from New Delhi. Gop Kishori Mataji taught you? Okay. Yes. All right. So, conclusion of the first six chapters. You remember the final verse of the sixth chapter? What's the conclusion? Somebody knows the verse? The last verse of the sixth chapter? Yes, good. And the translation? Of all the yogis, uh, whoever is having uh, means, uh, great faith and who abides in me, thinks of me and renders uh, transcendental service unto me, so he is very intimate to me and he is united with me in yoga. He is considered the highest of all I, yogis, yeah, right? Yeah, highest of all yogis. Right. Okay, so madgatena, abiding, thinking of me, and antar atmana, within himself. So this is the conclusion of the first six chapters, the yoga ladder. At the, the top of the yoga ladder is bhakti. And the, the principle of bhakti is to think of Krishna within ourselves. How to think of Krishna? Of course, we think of Krishna by hearing and chanting and remembering by the different nine angas of bhakti. Bhakti is the process by which we can naturally think of Krishna. So that was the conclusion of the first six chapters, that the, the topmost yogi is the bhakta. Didn't someone like to read, please? Conclusion of first six chapters. In the first six, six chapters of Bhagavad Gita, the living entity has been described as a non-material non -material spirit soul capable of elevating himself to self-realization by different types of yogas. At the end of the sixth chapter, it has been clearly stated that the steady concentration of, my, of the mind upon Krishna, or in other words, Krishna consciousness, is the highest form of all yoga. By concentrating one's mind upon Krishna, one is able to know the absolute truth completely, but not otherwise. Okay, thank you. This is Prabhupada's purport from the first verse of the seventh chapter. Now, Prabhupada lectured a lot on the Bhagavad Gita. And you may be surprised to know which verse he lectured the most on. Yes, does anybody know? Did you ever check to see which verse Prabhupada lectured the most on? 7.1. Yes, right. No, no, that was not the most popular verse. Prabhupada lectured much more on this verse, the first verse of the seventh chapter. More than, I think more than 30 recorded lectures are there on this first verse of the seventh chapter. So Prabhupada certainly considered this to be a very important verse, very significant verse, that he could lecture on it so often. Very appropriate for presenting the philosophy of devotion, this very first verse of the seventh chapter. Krishna described the yoga ladder and now after describing the yoga ladder and that bhakti is at the top of the yoga ladder, so Lord Krishna is now speaking, going to tell us about bhakti yoga, that what is bhakti yoga, how to practice it. And so we, you can see here. Uh, Prabhupada's purpose it has been clearly stated 
steady concentration of the mind upon Krishna is the highest form of all yoga. Concentrating our mind upon Krishna, by concentrating our mind on Krishna, one is able to know the absolute truth completely, but not otherwise. So this is very, very important, very significant. We have to be able to fix the mind on Krishna. Can you think of some examples of devotees who showed us how to fix how they how they fix their mind on Krishna? Do you do you know the, the example? Maharaj Ambarish, right? He was engaged in all the different practices of devotion. But what was the very first activity of Maharaj Ambarish? Yes, right. Savaimana Krishna Pararavindaya. And then Vachamsi Vaikunta Gunarnavarnane. Yes, the very first thing which he did was to fix his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. So we're going to engage in devotional service. This is a process. The first thing it begins with concentration of the mind. On Krishna. How are we going to think of Krishna, concentrate on Krishna? Mm -hmm. Yes, someone can read. One should therefore begin yoga practice as directed in the last verse of the sixth chapter. Concentration of the mind upon the Krishna, the Supreme is made possible by prescribed devotional service in nine different forms of which Sravanam is the first and the most important. Bhagavad Gita Prophet 7.1. Right. Shravanam is the first and most important. Most important. Lord Chaitanya gave a lot of importance to hearing. You can see when Lord Chaitanya met with Ramananda Rai, they discussed about Lord Chaitanya had asked Ramananda Rai, give some verses from the scripture about the ultimate goal of life. And so Ramananda Rai explained different processes. First of all, he spoke about Varnashram, and then he spoke about uh, Karmarpana, offering the results of our work to Krishna. And then he spoke about Swadharma Tyag, giving up our duties, giving up our material designations, our material religions. And then he spoke about um, Karma Misra Bhakti, devotional service mixed with Orgyana Misra Bhakti, devotional service mixed with Gyan. But Lord Chaitanya was not satisfied with them. But when he finally gave a verse where he spoke about hearing, then Lord Chaitanya said, yes, this is actually proper. This is devotional service. And so Lord Chaitanya said, now take this verse and explore it. And hear about Krishna in the association of devotees. Lord Chaitanya said, this is the most important, this is the beginning, this is the foundation of our devotional service, hearing. If we hear nicely, then we can repeat. And when we hear and chant nicely, then we will remember. So it's important for us. We have to hear first, then we have to practice chanting. And then remembrance will come naturally. Okay. Yes, please read. The, the, the whole world is full of sinful life, so we are creating the atmosphere, Punya Shravana, chanting and hearing. Simply by these two process, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Punya Pious. So anyone who is coming here, even he does not understand a single word which we are speaking, if he simply hears, he becomes pious. Simply by hearing, even a child, 
he becomes pious. And unless we are free from our sinful life, we cannot un understand about God. Shrimad Bhagavatam 1.17 Yes, have you heard this verse before? Punya Shravana Kirtana? Yes. You've heard this before, Madhiji? Yes? Do you know the rest? Yes. Do you know the rest of the verse? How does it begin? You know the whole verse? How does it begin? Shrimvatam. Shrimvatam Swakatha Krishna Punya Shra. Yes. All right. Do you know the do you know the meaning of the verse? Just by hearing one can become purified. Yeah. Lord Krishna, super soul within the heart of the devotee cleanses the desire for material enjoyment for those who relish this message when properly heard and chanted. So punya shravana, Prabhupada explained, of course punya means pious, and so it, it, simply hearing about Krishna is a pious activity. And this is the kind of pious activity which qualifies us for devotional service. If we hear about Krishna from the pure devotees like Prabhupada, then it makes it easy for us to enter into the practice of devotional service. And Prabhupada said, he does not, he, he may not even understand a single word which we are speaking. If he simply hears, it becomes by And Prabhupada also said he used to hear his own spiritual master. And he said, you know, I couldn't understand what he was saying. Sometimes he would talk, he would talk so elevated that sometimes I wouldn't know what he was talking about. And we see it like that also, you know, in our Krishna consciousness movement, sometimes people you know, we give them a book to read or something, and they look at the books and they say, Oh, I can't understand it at all. One lady was telling me her husband looked at her book and he just couldn't understand what it was about. He was just, he was surprised. You know, he was an educated man, a well-educated man. But when he looked at the book, he just he couldn't understand what it was about. It was just like another language almost. But to us, to devotees, you know, we take pleasure in reading these books and hearing. I thought it's very nice. So hearing about Krishna creates our piety. It creates our qualification for hearing. And Prabhupada said, even a child, he becomes pious. And, and then he mentions also, unless we are free from our sinful life, we cannot understand about God. So, more qualifications, not only hearing. <coughs> Let me open it. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Knowledge of the Absolute. Okay, here's the first verse. All right, so who would like to chant it and read it for me? Yes, go ahead. Someone? The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Now here, O Arjuna, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, with your mind attached to me, you can know me in full, free from doubt. Yes, chant the Sanskrit. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Maya Ashakta Manapartha Yogam Yunjan 
mad asraya asam asam shayam samagram mam yatha gyanasya si tat shunu okay bhagavad gita 7.1 right yeah so krishna's first instruction in the seventh chapter maya satamana with your mind attached to me right and then touch Srinu. Prabhupada said this word touch Srinu. This is especially significant because this means hear, hear from me, hear from Lord Krishna. So this is important for us. We have to hear from Krishna or from Krishna's representative. Krishna's representative means someone who will only speak of Krishna. He will, he will represent the, the teachings of Krishna. He's not going to present something else. Many other people may speak, but they will give some other meaning. Okay. So that's the first verse, which was which Prabhupada liked to later on so often. And the important point there is this maya sakta manapartha, that we must, in the very beginning of our devotional service, we have to concentrate our mind on Krishna. That devotional service is meaning at practice for the pleasure of Krishna. So we have to hear about Krishna, we have to know about Krishna, and then we can absorb our mind in thinking of Krishna. Hmm. All right, and then uh, that's the first verse, and then the second verse we didn't touch on, but I'll just read it to you. The second verse says, I shall now declare unto you in full this, this knowledge, both phenomenal and numinous. This being not, thus, this being known, nothing further shall remain for you to know. So you know Krishna, one who knows Krishna knows everything. There's nothing further to be known because Krishna means everything. Krishna's energy includes also Krishna. It's, everything is there from coming from Krishna. So if we know Krishna, we have full knowledge of the world. And here, this third verse, also a very famous verse and often quoted, and certainly we want to memorize these kind of verses, right? Someone can chant it for us. Manushyanam sahasreshu kaschidhatati siddhate yata tamapi siddhanam kaschin mambi tattvataha out of thousands among men, one may endeavor for perfection. And of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. Very Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. <clears throat> okay, so thousands among men, one may endeavor for perfection. What are, what are all the others doing? If only one's endeavoring for perfection, what are all the other men doing? Someone can answer? Uh, material enjoyment? Yeah, they are engrossed in material enjoyment. Well, sense enjoyment, uh, sense enjoyment for uh, uh, his own profit, profit of body. Huh? Sorry? Sense enjoyment for profit of body only. Not interested in transcendental knowledge. What are they Just interested in? Eating, sleeping, mating and different. Ah, yes. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. That's... So, are we not supposed to eat and sleep and mate and defend? The animals also go that supposed to eat and sleep. Something which we are supposed to do as human beings, and try to go beyond eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Try to know that the, the real knowledge, purpose for which we are born. Yes, 
there has to be some, it's not that we, are, we have to stop eating, sleeping, mating and defending, but rather the eating, sleeping, mating and defending must be done in the proper manner, according to scriptural injunctions, religious principles. Then there's no harm. But if people just uh, engage in these activities with no discrimination and in an uncontrolled manner, then that is animal life, as you have said. Yeah, the animals, they're doing these things. They're, so the animals, they're regulated by nature. The animals, just like certain animals, they'll be vegetarian, certain animals are flesh-eating. They're regulated by their nature. And, but the human being, he is, he is given more freedom because he has a greater responsibility. However, it's very rare that people even think about a higher responsibility. Most people, as we hear, thousands among men, only one is trying for perfection. All the others, they're trying to improve their standards of eating and sleeping and mating and defending. They want to eat more, they want to eat more, uh, they, they want to sleep longer, they want to have everything in a more luxurious manner. They're thinking that is the goal of life. So they're blinded by the material world. But one, they're, they're out of thousands, there's one who may endeavor for perfection. And what is that perfection? What is that perfection? It is surrender to Krishna is the perfection. Well, you may say like that, but according to this verse in Bhagavad Gita, what is Krishna talking about? Yata kaschid yata ti siddha ye. Krishna uses the word siddha, talks about, he uses that word siddha meaning perfection. So what is that perfection which they're endeavoring for? Knowing the absolute uh, truth or knowing the absolute nature and uh, knowing our position in relation to God. To, to know who you are and what is your relationship with the Spirit. To understand the cause of everything. Understanding the cause of everything, to know who you are, yes. Well, to know who you are, I think that's pretty close to what I'm looking for, yet people have to understand, first of all, generally the first step in self-realization is where people come to understand, I'm not the body, that I'm a soul. So this is a level of perfection, that somebody has understood their identity as a spiritual particle, different from the material body. Right? So this is a level of perfection. They, we could say Brahman realized. They have come to the platform of Brahman. Because the nature of the soul is Brahman. So if someone understands I'm not the body, I'm a soul, that is Brahman realization. And that is... Yes? Brahma Jignasa. What? Trying to know about the Brahmas. Trying, trying to know about what? Brahma means a supreme. The Brahman. Trying to know about the Brahman. Well, first of all, you know, people may not understand that there is a supreme. They okay. simply want to understand, first of all, who am I? <laughs> Self-realization. It's, it's a much higher stage to go on, as, just like Krishna mentions here. Those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. In other words, there are many people who come to the platform of the Brahman, but 
hardly one of them knows Krishna in truth. It's very rare. It's a much higher level of realization to understand that there is a Supreme above everyone. Not everyone can appreciate that there is a Supreme. You know, not everyone is brought up in a God-conscious atmosphere where we understand there's a, some Supreme Being, some Creator. May, the, nowadays, just look at the world today, you have different countries and not only different countries which are promoting com, uh, socialism and communism, atheism, even in the Western countries, you have atheistic societies. Uh, I know a couple who are, uh, they're, they're running a program in the university, National University, Australian ANI, Australian National University in Canberra. And they told me they have a program every week to chant Hare Krishna and discuss Bhagavad Gita. But they said before their program, it's an atheist society. So there's a hall which is used for different societies. So the people who use that hall before them, that's the atheist society. And when the atheist society see our devotees come, then they look at them and they scorn at them and they ridicule them. Because for them, they cannot understand that there is a Supreme, and that there's a personality behind the creation. That is more difficult for people to understand. Just like to teach people you're not the body, you're a soul, that's not so difficult. But to actually teach them that Krishna is supreme and you're his servant, that is really difficult. That's really hard for people to swallow. Not so easy for people. And unless, of course, they've been brought up in a culture where you come to the temple regularly and you see the deities and so on. But if you're not in that habit of going to temple and seeing the deity, then it's really difficult for people. But ardent, even people who are, you know, just a little bit open-minded, they can understand, I'm not the body, I'm Brahman, I'm a soul. That's much easier to speak to people and to present to people. So this is the point which is being made here, that thousands of people, most people are just busy in material life. They don't care about perfection, never think about it. But there may be one rare soul and he endeavors for perfection and that perfection is coming to know he's not the body. And those people who have realized they're not the body, hardly one will know Krishna in truth. It's much harder for people to understand Krishna. Right? Everybody appreciates this? You can understand this point? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. We'll go ahead. All right. Somebody like to read here? Knowledge of the Absolute. The first six chapters of the Gita are meant for those who are interested in transcendental knowledge. In understanding the Self, the Super Self and the process of realization by Jnana Yoga, Dhyana Yoga and discrimination of the Self from matter. However, Krishna can be known only by persons who are in Krishna Consciousness. Other transcendentalists may achieve impersonal Brahman realization, for this is easier than understanding Krishna. Bhagavad Gita 7.3.4.2 So Prabhupada noted this point here. Other transcendentalists may achieve impersonal Brahman realization, for this is easier than understanding Krishna. So achieving impersonal Brahman realization means simply to understand, I'm not the body, I am Brahman, I am a soul. 
that is easier than trying to understand Krishna, that Krishna is a divine being with a transcendental body, a body which is not like our body, a body which is Satchitananda. That is much more difficult for people to understand. Mm -hmm. Everyone's okay with this? You can appreciate, you agree with this point? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go ahead. Oh, okay. Yes, somebody can read here. Yeah. Uh, chapter 7, Knowledge of Absolute. It is not possible for the woman realized impersonalist or the Paramatma realized yogi to understand Krishna. The Supreme Person has to be a Godhead as a son of Mother Yashoda or the charioteer of Arjuna. Even the great demigods are sometimes confused about Krishna. Mukhyantiya Surya. Mam to Veda Kashana. No one knows me as I am, the Lord says. And if one does, not, does know him, then Samahatma Sudurlabha, such a great soul is very rare. Therefore, unless one practices devotional service to the Lord, one cannot know Krishna as he is the Kotaha, even though one is a great scholar or philosopher. Mm. Okay. So we have to understand the nature of the Absolute Truth, that there's different realizations of the Absolute, right? There's the realization of Brahman, then there's the realization of Paramatma, and then there's realization of Bhagavan. They're all the Absolute Truth, but they're different features. The impersonal Brahman is the the all-pervading energy of the Lord and the Paramatma, that's the Lord in the heart, and then Bhagavan, Sri Krishna, is the Lord who is above everyone. And it, Prabhupada describes him here, the son of Mother Yashoda, or the charioteer of Arjuna. So it's very difficult for people to understand that Krishna could be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One man said to me, I was, I was doing book distribution one time in Europe, and a young man said to me, he said, I know Krishna cannot be God. Krishna took birth. He has a mother and father, so he cannot be God. And then he said to me, Shiva is God. Shiva is light. <laughs> Very interesting. So we asked, him, where did the light come from? Where did the light come from? He, he never thought about that. Okay, so Prabhupada describes Lord Krishna here. He's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he's also the son of Mother Yashoda. And he's the charioteer of Arjuna. Charioteer means he's taking a subordinate position to Arjuna. He's become the servant of Arjuna. So these, these roles which Krishna plays in the world are very bewildering for people. And we've quoted here from Prabhupada's purport, even the demigods are confused. Muyanti Yatsurayaha. Right? Even the great demigods, so many great demigods, they become bewildered. We have the Brahma Vimohan Lila. Lord Brahma was testing Krishna, and you have Indra becoming proud and trying to annihilate Govardhan Hill. And you see Lord Shiva also sometimes fighting with Krishna. So even though they're great demigods, sometimes they become confused. So Lord Krishna says, no one knows me as I am. There's another verse also which Krishna says, I am never manifest to the foolish and the unintelligent. For them I am covered by my eternal creative potency. And Prabhupada quotes also the verse, Samahatma Sudurlabha, the Bahunam Janmanamanti Gyanavamam Prapajanti Vasudev Saman Vasudev Sarvamiti Samahatma Sudurlava. 
after many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge surrenders to me, knowing that me, Vasudev, that I'm a Vasudev, I'm, I'm everything. But such a soul, such a Mahatma, very rare, very rare. So the goal of knowledge, because after one who is actually in knowledge, the goal of knowledge is to surrender to Vasudev. But it's very rare. It takes a very long time. Lord Krishna said, after many births and deaths. So it's going to, you're going to make advancement very slowly by the path of knowledge, not very quick. Nowadays we like everything quick, right? We don't, it shouldn't take too long. Everything should be quick. We have fast food, we have fast cars. Everything, we like to go the quick way. So, Lord Krishna is also saying, devotional service, that's a sure quick way. You can know Krishna. Otherwise, you cannot know Krishna. Just being a philosopher or scholar, dhyani, that will not help. We have to take to devotional service. Krishna is known only by devotion. Only by devotion, we will see several verses Krishna describes. Only by devotion can it be understood. So we ask you, this is an exercise in academic integrity. How may this statement be misunderstood in relation to devotees of Krishna and in particular to ISKCON devotees? Devotees of Krishna and and because we're saying here, unless one practices devotional service of the, to the Lord, one cannot know Krishna, even though one is a great scholar. So, we're asking you, how may this quote be misunderstood in relation to ISKCON devotees? and devotees of Krishna. We are saying, you must practice devotional service. So what could, what could happen? How could people misunderstand that? Um, Guru Maharaj, can I try? Yes. Um, so, People who do not understand this may think that we are fanatical, but one who has actually seen the truth, one who actually practices it, he has actually tasted the honey instead of just licking the outside of the honey jar. Yes, we may, people may say that we are fanatical, right? That because we're saying what? What, what is it? In what way are we being fanatical? Um, that um, we, we cannot know the Supreme Lord unless we practice devotional service to the Lord. But a scholar may, may just say that, no, just by reading it, I can know. But, but this has to be realized knowledge, just, not just academic knowledge. It has to be realized. And that realized can only, realization can only happen when the Lord, you know, in, in your heart, Gives you that mercy. Yes. Yes. Well, Michael, yes. Sir. Well, when Krishna wishes, then Krishna, Krishna, a person can know the Krishna. Like Sarvama Vatajaja, he could not know Krishna. Uh, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed himself, then only he could be able to know. Another example also in uh, also happened in the Vrindavan. Mahaprabhu also was with the, uh, the uh, devotee, but he could not know. The Mahaprabhu has come. He told that Krishna has arrived in Vrindavan. Uh, the, but after the revealing of the Mahaprabhu, then he could be able to know the uh, Krishna. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, he was not a devotee. He was Initially, he was a great logician and he was a great scholar and philosopher and he could not really appreciate 
the path of bhakti until he met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that's an example of one person who was a great scholar and philosopher, but he went on to become a devotee by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes, it's a, a good example that it shows us that even for the impersonalist, there's something higher. Because Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, he was already realized on the platform of Brahman. But he took to devotional service. And that was a, a very uh, shock thing in India at that time, 500 years ago. Because Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was very prominent. He was a guru of all the Mayavadi sannyasis there. And he was very, a very important person. And he became a devotee, he became a follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu brought him into Krishna consciousness. Yes? Uh, we wanted to know, like, uh, uh, Padmalochan Prabhu touched on the fact that people may say that we are being fanatical because we say, if we say, you know, well, if we say, you know, may, may be misunderstood, we may say, for example, that what you're doing, your other pro, all these other religions are useless. You cannot know Krishna. If you cannot know, you cannot know Krishna. So whatever practice you do is useless. It's of no good. And so that if we talk like that, then certainly people will take offence. Right? If we if we think, oh, all these other religions are useless. Only Krishna consciousness is valid. Everything else is just a waste of time. It's not perfect. And if we say that Krishna himself is the son of Yashoda, and the charioteer of Arjuna, so how is it possible? Because people have their own conceptions about God, so it's very difficult for them to understand how God could take birth as the son of Mother Yashoda and how he could become the servant of someone like Arjuna. So it, people are, are, if we are saying these things about Krishna, and we're saying that you cannot know Krishna until you become a devotee, you have to practice. You may be a great scholar, it's not going to do you any good. And so people may, they will be very uh, offended by our talking if we talk like that. We have to understand that in different parts of the world, there are different cultures and different traditions. And Krishna consciousness is not sectarian. We don't say we are the only way. We don't say only this way, no other way. Oh, well, we're open. We, we accept that there are other religions. And we accept that the absolute truth is described in, in all these different traditions. Whether you follow Christianity or Islam or Buddhism or whatever, there are so many different traditions and certainly they have done tremendous good for the world. So we cannot say that only Krishna consciousness is right. We are the only way and no other way. And we have to recognize that these other traditions are there and they have their teachings just as we have our teachings. They have their philosophy, just as we have a philosophy. So as devotees, we must be careful about how we present the Krishna conscious philosophy to others. And we shouldn't just be telling them, only this way, no other way. 
that, that, that will be condemned will be considered fanatical. So we have to understand these different kinds of statements properly and we should be careful how we present them to the public. That we want to be respectful to other different traditions and different philosophies. Hare Krishna Maharaj, um, quick question here. Yes. So, are they able to reach to the same goal through their other tradition as well, or they really need to be on this path? Well, they can reach to their goal, whatever their goal is, you know, what, what is their goal usually? Like, if you're an impersonalist, then your goal is to become one, to come to the platform of the Brahman. Somebody else may be practicing personal religion, you know, a Christian, so on. They may develop love of God. We cannot say we have the, we are the only ones who can develop love of God. You know, in the history of Christianity, there have been many great mystics in the Christian tradition, and they they really they were really really powerful. They really had wonderful qualities and. So we have, we have to appreciate these things, uh, these facts, you know, the, the Christian tradition and the Buddhist masters and the Muslim Sufis and teachers and so on, they all have their own faith and they certainly they can achieve their goals. They worship God, they love, develop their, they, some, their goal is simply to pray to God, they pray to God and, and develop their relationship with God in, in some different ways according to their own tradition. So Prabhupada, there was one time Prabhupada went to, he was in Australia and the devotees had arranged a program for him to go to a monastic place. There was a lot of monks there and they were following it with St. Francis tradition. And they received Prabhupada very nicely. And Prabhupada was very happy with them, talking to them. At one point they told Prabhupada about St. Francis, that he would address the trees and the flowers and he would address them as his brother and sisters and like this. And when Prabhupada heard this, Prabhupada said, oh, this is real God consciousness. So like that, Prabhupada showed uh, his respect for their tradition. At the same time, you can see Prabhupada meeting in France, I think it was in France or Switzerland, probably France, he met this one cardinal and the, he, Prabhupada just spoke to him about meat eating. Because generally Prabhupada said, when we speak to Christians, he said, if they don't accept that we shouldn't eat meat, then there's, not, there's no point to go any further in speaking to them. So Prabhupada met with this cardinal from, and he was talking to the man about the importance of not eating meat and not killing the animals. But the cardinal, he couldn't accept it. So Prabhupada just stayed on that point and he didn't go any further. Guru Maharaj, I, I, I just wanted to... Uh, I think the last statement by Srila Prabhupada is so powerful because many a times when we are preaching, um, you know, there is a, an expectation that this person should become a devotee. And then there's a tendency that we can become a bit fanatical in the preaching. But the, the, the statement which you, know, you highlighted is so important because all we need to do is to be friendly with them and to engage them in some devotional service. And then Krishna takes over, just like what Prabhupada has mentioned. I, 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 I think this is a very inspiring statement. Yes, we have to be 
cautious. You know, it is true. You know, sometimes also in dealing with our congregation, people who come to our programs, sometimes we think, oh, this these people, they're useless. They won't chant. They only chant one round or something. Yeah. <laughs> And we condemn them because, you know, they're not coming forward to take initiation. But we have to understand different people will have different levels of practice. You know, some people will go on and they'll become initiated and may follow very, very serious. And other people, they're satisfied, they just want to chant one round and they like, but they like to come to temple. And they like to come to the temple and they take part in the program and... They observe the festivals and so on. So we encourage them. We have to encourage everybody. We, and we have to be friendly and have relations, keep relationships with people. At the same time, we have to understand the limitations and the differences. And so that's also there with people from other traditions. We have a respect for them that at least they have some religious tradition, they have some faith in some religion, which is a lot better than many people today who have no religion and totally atheistic. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Uh, okay, this is a quote from Prabhupada. Someone can read here. Nobody is interested to become Brahmana. They are interested to become dogs and fox. That is their interest. Manush yana sahas reshu kaschit ne ye tati sit yaye and yatatam api sit hanam. Bhagavad Gita 7.3. It is not that become, be coming to the platform of a qualified Brahmana. One can understand Krishna. That is also not complete. Still, you have to go further. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.220, Vrindavan, October 31, 1972. All right. Thank you. So, nobody is interested to even become a Brahmana. Brahmana meaning one who knows Brahman. But people are just like the animals, they're busy in the, in the dog and hog business. So it's rare that people want to come to the platform of a Brahman. But then Prabhupada said, even coming to the platform of a qualified Brahmana doesn't mean that you will understand Krishna. You have to go further. So understanding of Krishna is very confidential and it's a, a rare thing to bring people to that higher knowledge, to understand Krishna. Okay, we're going ahead now, we're coming up to here, this is verse number 4 and 5 of the chapter. Yes, somebody please read. Silavati Mataji, can you read because uh, Rukmani Prabhu is around. Arjuna is addressed as Mahabaho, the great warrior. Can you understand what it is meant by great warrior? Whoever is acting under Krishna's direction is a great warrior. Just as Arjuna is fighting his battle, so when you take shelter of Krishna and fight against material opposing elements, sutras, you are also Mahabaho. You are fighting with persons who are not Krishna conscious. You are pushing on the Krishna consciousness movement by fighting. But this fighting is different. This was taught by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna Varnam Tvishakshanam Sango Pangrastra Prasadam. Lecture yeah. Prabhupada 7.5, 7.4 and 2.5, only 71. Right. Hare Krishna. Thank you, thank you. So Arjuna is Mahabaho, he's a great warrior. <laughs> And so Prabhupada is encouraging the devotees also. Just as Arjuna is fighting in Kurukshetra, so he said, as Arjuna, of course, he, although he's fighting, but we are also fighting against the material elements. Even though we may be sudras, we are fighting the energy. So we are also Mahabaho. We are fighting with persons who are not devotees, not Krishna conscious. 
We, we cannot spread Krishna consciousness just by being idle. We have to fight. We have to go out and fight. So then Prabhupada quotes this important verse, Krishna Varnam Tivisha Akrishnam Sango Pangastra Parshadam. This is from the Srimad <coughs> from the Srimad Bhagavatam, describing the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and how Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught Sankirtan, Krishna Varna, activities in relation to Krishna. Right? This is the, the Sankirtan movement, chanting Hare Krishna and engaging people in Krishna's service. This is our fighting. So like this we bring people to a higher consciousness. All right, so then the chapter goes on to describe about Krishna's energies. If you look here, uh, this is text number uh, 5, is it? Text number 5. Oh, text four and five, right? Four and five. Text number four describes the elements of the material nature, the Mahabhuti. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. Described here as apara prakriti, the inferior energy. There are five gross elements, the earth, the water, fire, air, ether, and three subtle. Subtle being the mind, the intelligence, and false ego. So this is the apara prakriti. And then, but then Krishna says, apariyam itvastyanyam prakritim vidimeparam jiva bhuta mahabha. That beside the inferior energy, there is another energy of mind, which are all living entities. So the jivas, the living entities, they are also prakriti, meaning Krishna's energy, but they are para prakriti, they are the superior energy, right? Superior. But they're, what is the problem? With the living entities, they are... Mm -hmm. They're exploiting the resources of the material, inferior nature. This is the problem. We are trying to exploit the resources of the inferior, material nature. We're not recognizing that this energy all belongs to Krishna. And we are also Prakriti, we also belong to Krishna. But we're thinking that Apara prakriti, the inferior energy is there for us to exploit, to take advantage of, right? So, and kindly note here, two kinds of prakriti. And we, the living entities, we are also prakriti. But we're superior. In what way are we superior? Anybody like to say? Yes. Yeah. Well, not everybody knows that. Maharaj, we are in quality, same with Lord Krishna, but in quantity we are not. Yes. That's true. But what way are we superior to the prakriti, to the inferior prakriti? We are the para prakriti. Why, why are we superior to the inferior prakriti? Subtle elements and uh, gross elements doesn't consciousness. We have consciousness. Yeah, that's the key word, consciousness. That makes a difference, right? The apara prakriti has no consciousness, but the para prakriti, we are conscious, we are conscious living entities. The inferior energy does not have consciousness, right? The table, 
your chair. They're, they have no consciousness. But the living entities, even the insects, the plants, they all have consciousness. Everyone agree? Understand? Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj. Okay. You can see the superior. We are trying to exploit, we are trying to exploit the, the, the inferior energy. We are thinking it's for our enjoyment. But we don't recognize actually it all belongs to Lord Krishna. So this is the problem. We become entangled in the material energy. Okay. Someone like to read here? Bhinna means separated. As an example is when I speak into the tape recorder, when you reply the tape re when you replay the tape recorder, you hear my voice. But it is not me. It is my separated energy. With my energy I have spoken. I have vibrated some sound and it is recorded on the tape. When it is played back, it produces exactly the same sound, but it is separated from me. Try to understand. This material world is just like that, Vinna, separate. Real life is in the spiritual world. And these energies, the external energy, Krishna says, are separated. Separated means you cannot perceive Krishna directly from this energy. Bhagavad Gita 7.4, New Vrindavan, 1974. Hi, Krishna. Thank you. All right, so where is this word Bina coming from? If you look in chapter 7, text number 4, remember, Bhumera po nalo vayu kam mano buddha evacha. Lord Krishna is describing the different elements. He said, all together these eight comprise my separated material elements. Right? Krishna was using the word my separated material elements, bina, prakriti, ashtada, separate. So what is the meaning, Prabhupada is explaining this word separated. And here he gives an example about his sound vibration, it's on the recorded, on the tape recorder. This was a real to real tape recording at the time. Prabhupada gave another example about separated. He said, just like the milk, he said, milk from the cow is the separated energy of the cow. And then he gave another example. He talked about, he said, man and woman, they may be husband and wife, but they may be separated. And so the, the relation is not so sweet, not so... So the same way the Lord has his material energy. It's his separated energy. It's not so dear to him. Krishna's residence is in the spiritual world, not here in this material world. So this material world, where the material energy is, this is the separated energy of the Lord. Yes. Uh, one, one small question, Maharaj. Uh -huh. uh, you can also tell like that it is perverted reflection of the material world like that. You can tell like that. The material world is perverted? Reflection of the spiritual world. You can also tell like that, Maharaj. Yes, yes, yes you can. It's a uh, This purport indicates like that only, Maharaj. This purport. Well, uh, yeah. The whole purport, yeah. I mean, mainly, Prabhupada, I'm mean, just highlighting the, the use of the word separated, but certainly it's true, the material energy is the reflection of the spiritual world. The reflection is not real. It's the spiritual world which is real. So the material world is not actually reality, it's the reflection. That will be explained more in the 13th chapter. Maharaj, I just wanted to understand. Uh, I understood the example you gave 
the milk is the capital energy of the cow, I think and exactly understand the men and women part of the uh, example with you. You understood the example about the cow and the milk? And the other one you gave, I didn't understand, the men and women. Well, men and women, just like husband and wife, they're married. But sometimes people, they, get, they live separately, they separate, you know? They, they don't divorce, but they separate. Maybe they've got children, so they don't want to divorce, they just separate. The, the husband's living away from the wife, so they're separated from each other. So the relationship is not so intimate not so pleasing. So in the same way, the material energy, I was explaining that the material world is like that. It's not so pleasing, it doesn't give so much pleasure to Lord Krishna. He gets his, his, his residence, his home is in the Goloka, in the spiritual world. And he resides there and he has his greatest happiness there with all of his devotees. So the material world is like that, it's like the separated energy of Krishna. He comes here, he will come here just to do some business and then go. He will come here, speak the Bhagavad Gita, kill some demons, like then he'll go. He won't spend much time here. But he, he always lives in Goloka. Can you understand? Yes, Maharaj. Maharaji? Are you... Is it helping you any? Yeah, a kind of... <laughs> yeah, you think about it. You know, just like, you know, you're... It says here, Prabhupada said, real life is in the spiritual world. The real life is there. Material life, this is separate. It's there. There's some life here in the material world, but Krishna doesn't get the same pleasure here in this world as he gets in the spiritual world. Okay, I, you have to hear, hear this. Sometimes we have to hear these things again and again. Gradually, we begin to understand. So the separated part is uh, not exactly appreciated by many. He doesn't like devotees. Sorry, your voice is not very clear, Mataji. Could you speak okay. up? Like how Krishna doesn't like to be separated from his devotee, so the separated part, he's not very happy, he likes to be together. Yes, right, yes, he, he likes to be with his devotees. And he keeps all his devotees there in the spiritual world. And he comes here to see all the people and to try to attract them back to the spiritual world. But uh, why is the milk given? Is it not, uh, milk should not be separated from the cow then? Well, Prabhupada was just giving that as an example, the milk. The milk is separated from the cow, right? It's the energy of the cow, but it's separate from the cow. So the same way, Krishna's energy, earth, water, fire, air, ether, these are the elements of the material world. It's Krishna's energy, comes from Krishna. But at the same time, it's separate from Krishna. Yeah, I got it, I got it. Okay. Okay, energies of Krishna. Explain how from the eight separated energies mentioned in this section, there are 24 elements mentioned in chapter 13. So, of course, when you go to chapter 13, you read, you see there are 24 elements mentioned. Here we've mentioned eight separated elements. The 24 elements include things like the five working senses, 
five knowledge acquiring senses, five sense objects, right? And, and then... Uh, Three modes of nature. Huh? And, and one more, the, the unmanifested... Mind, mind intelligence. Well, mind intelligence, fox, ego, that's there in the eight separated energies. But the 24 elements, we've got eight, plus then five it's knowledge eight. senses, five working senses, five sense objects, and one more. Pradhan. 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 Oh, Pradhan, right. The, the unmanifested stage of the material, yeah, unmanifested stage, okay. So those are the 24 elements. You don't really have to worry about that yet. When you go to 13th chapter, you can think more about it. Okay, mentioned here. The first five gross elements plus their sense objects, earth, fragrance, water, taste, fire, form, air, touch, and earth, sound add up to 10 elements mind intelligence and false ego bring the total to 13. false ego is the cause of the five knowledge acquiring senses and the five working senses that equals 23 elements finally we add the mahatattva the 24th element which is the cause of false ego okay that's from Barijan Prabhu's book, Surrender Unto Me. All right, we'll go ahead. Krishna as the maintainer. Oh, this is a wonderful verse, right? We we'll get so many good verses in this chapter. Another wonderful verse. Mata parataram nanyat kanchidasti dhananjaya mai sarvam idam proktam sutre mani gana eva. So, Krishna is making a very bold claim here. Kindly note this. This is one of the verses where Krishna is speaking very powerfully. He's saying, there is no truth superior to me. Mata parataram nanya. And then he says, everything rests on me. And he gives an example. The example is, just like the beads are on a thread. Not just like we wear our neck beads, or you can see in the illustration, Krishna is wearing a necklace. So we see the beads, but we don't see the thread. And so in the same way, everything is resting on Krishna, but we don't see Krishna. He's maintaining everything. Hidden. He's hidden. He's confidential. Just like the beads are on a thread, the same way Krishna is maintaining like that, in a very confidential manner. And then Krishna, we want to note also, Lord Krishna said, there is no truth superior to him. Now this statement was never made by any other devata. Shiva, Brahma, Ganesh, Murga, Ama, none of these different devatas, they never said like that. They could never say no truth. So only Lord Krishna says this. This is a, a powerful verse which we often like to quote to people, where Krishna directly declares himself to be the supreme truth. Now, of course, there are many people who worship different devatas, and they, some, they generally their, philo their philosophy is, oh, all the gods are one. All the devas are one. All the devatas are one. They're all the same. But here Krishna says, no, there's no one superior to me. This is the st statement of Bhagavad Gita. All right? Then Krishna as the essence of everything. Text number 8 to 12. Someone can read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. O Sadhana of Kunti, I am the taste of water, the light of the sun and the moon, 
the syllable om in the vedic mantras i am the sound in eater and ability in man bhagavad gita 7.15 keep reading the verse explains how the lord is well pervasive by his diverse material and spiritual energies the supreme lord can be primarily perceived by his different energies and in the way he is realized in krishna practically speaking there is no conflict between personalism and impersonalism hmm. so prabhupada is saying like this there's no conflict between personalism and impersonalism yes go ahead prabhu prabhu keep reading therefore go ahead read your your sir is prabhu can you put yourself oh sorry therefore lord chaitanya established his sublime doctrine achintya bhedaya and abheda tattvada simultaneously oneness and difference right this is the philosophy given by lord chaitanya mahaprabhu each each of the vaishnava acharyas they have their particular philosophy and lord chaitanya he gave this philosophy achintya bed abheda tattva that everything is simultaneously one and at the same time different from krishna so prabhupada saying practically speaking there's no difference between personalism and impersonalism so we should understand what is being mentioned here what is the personal feature what is the impersonal feature the supreme lord can can be preliminary perceived by his different energies so some people they will perceive the lord by his energies that is that would be realizing him impersonally if we see the lord simply as energy just like it's mentioned here the light of the sun or the taste of water this is all these are impersonal presentations of krishna the sound in ether but at the same time these are manifestations of krishna the brahman is also the the brahman is the energy or light coming from the body of krishna we want to understand everything in relation to krishna just like the living entities we living entities we are souls so we are part and parcel of krishna we are one with krishna one with krishna in the sense that we are brahman and at the same time we are different from krishna because krishna is the supreme brahman and we are tiny parts of the brahman so there's a difference between the living entities and krishna but at the same time there's a oneness the oneness is that we're both brahman and then here also we're hearing the light of the sun and the moon the taste of water all these this is the different energies of krishna so the 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 energy of krishna and krishna himself they're one they're connected to each other one is the energy of krishna and the other is krishna so krishna is the personal feature and the energy of krishna is the impersonal feature so this is being described here that we can know krishna we can know krishna through these things just like prabhu sometimes people would say to prabhu pad have you ever seen god and prabhu pad say would say to them who who has not seen god everyone has seen the light of the sun and the moon he said that is god and so we we have to see god in different ways you see it's not that oh you have to see krishna in the threefold bending form playing the flute with a peacock feather but we can see krishna through his energies through these different energies which are being described here 
the light of the sun and the moon, the taste of water. We should think this is Krishna. Is it clear? Yeah, we'll go ahead. Here's some more examples. So even if you are not inclined to chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, right? Some people, not everybody can chant Hare Krishna. But Prabhupada said, even you, you don't want to chant Hare Krishna, try to understand Krishna in this way. This is a process given by Krishna himself. Rasoham apsukontiya. You have to drink water. You cannot avoid it. So, when you taste while drinking water, anything drinking, apsu, apsu, means any liquid thing. Either you drink milk or even up to, even you drink wine. So you have got some taste in any liquid thing while drinking. So Krishna says, Rasoham apsukhonte a. Rasoham apsukhonte a. What's the meaning? Taste. Among the taste, I am and the Krishna. No. no. I am the taste of water, O Krishna. O Kunti, O Sana Kunti. Yes, I am the taste in water, right? Prabhupada, we mentioned here. So Krishna says, Rasoham Absukonti A, my dear Kuntiya, Arjuna, that taste in the liquid thing which you drink or use, that I am. Just see how easily it can be done. Nobody is without drinking. Nobody is without drinking something liquid. Either Coca-Cola or water or this or that. We all have to drink something. So Krishna says that I am the taste. So where is the difficulty of understanding Krishna? Where is the difficulty of understanding Krishna? Krishna says, I am the taste. Taste of whatever you drink. He said, even you drink wine. There was a one man in Jakarta, Indonesia. He said, Prabhupada, I like Krishna, but I also like wine. So Prabhupada told him, when you drink wine, you should think that wine, that is the taste of Krishna. So, similarly, when we drink water, we will offer the water to Krishna. And we should remember that taste, that is Krishna. Is everyone okay with this? Rasoham apsukontiya. Krishna said, I am the taste in water. Or, it doesn't have to be water, it could be other liquid. It could be your, your wine. We hope you're not, but... <laughs> okay? So this is understanding Krishna. Okay, going ahead. The jurisdiction of Krishna consciousness extends everywhere. And one who knows Krishna consciousness is blessed. At the end of the purport to text number 8. The jurisdiction of Krishna consciousness extends everywhere. One who knows Krishna Consciousness is blessed. We should think ourselves to be blessed, right? Because we're learning Krishna Consciousness. We're becoming Krishna Conscious. So this is a great blessing for us. The jurisdiction of Krishna Consciousness extends everywhere. Everywhere. The whole world, the whole material creation, it is all under the jurisdiction of Lord Krishna. There's nothing separate from Krishna. Is it clear? Okay? 
टॉपिक से हमारा यस वन क्वेश्चन हमारा हमारा यू टोल्ड दैट प्रॉपर इज टेलिंग दैट वन इज आल्सो गणेश ऑफ कृष्णा बट अनदर थिंग इज दैट प्रॉपर इज एम्फसाइजिंग ऑन द दैट वी शुड नॉट ईट वी शुड नॉट ड्रिंक वाइन ऑन द वी शुड नॉट ईट मीट लाइक दैट हाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड इफ दिस वाज टू हमारा I I wish your voice was a bit clearer Prabhu I don't know which verse you're talking about No you told me that you in proper to one person that when uh, when is also is energy of krishna and another thing said proper is proper is also emphasizing on the uh, four uh, don'ts that we should eat meat no don't drink uh, wine like that and how to understand this verse maharaj that You told that no. Well, just see here, Prabhupada said at the very beginning, even if you're not inclined to chant Hare Krishna, he said, try to understand Krishna. So you have to understand not everybody's going to follow the regulated principles. We have to, but still we have to encourage them to somehow try to understand Krishna. different people will be at different stages you cannot think just because somebody can't follow the regulative principles that we will give them up so prabhupada is preaching to everyone and you have to encourage everyone to somehow progress in krishna consciousness so if they try to understand krishna in this different way just if they start to think about krishna then that will be a big improvement for them even they're drinking wine but if they're thinking about krishna it's better than not than just to drink wine and not think about krishna right hari krishna so we have to, we have to appreciate prabhupad how he's preaching to everybody the whole world and he knows not everybody is going to be a devotee not everybody is going to follow four regulative principles and chant but prabhupada is preaching to everyone so give everyone the chance let them somehow become a little krishna conscious thank you prabhu for bringing that up good point any other questions okay Shastra Chakshus. We want to equip the students with the ability to see through the eyes of Scripture with a Krishna conscious worldview. We want to assist the student in realizing Scripture and in seeing Krishna at all times and in all places. Right. So that's the purpose of Shastra Chakshus. All right. Going ahead. Text number twelve. Someone read. Chapter seven, line four, four, seven. Although these material modes of nature are emanations from the supreme Lord Krishna, he is not subject to them. For instance, under the state laws, one may be punished, but the king, the lawmaker, is not subject to that law. Similarly, all the modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance, are emanations from the supreme Lord Krishna. But Krishna is not subject to the material nature. Therefore, he is nirguna, which means that these gunas or modes, although issuing from him, do not affect him. Bhagavad Gita, chapter seven, twelve, text twelve, purport. All right, text number twelve. I'll just read the verse. Know that all states of being, be they of goodness, passion, or ignorance, are manifested by my energy. I am in one sense everything. but i'm independent i am not under the modes of material nature for they on the contrary are within me right so the modes of material nature we may think that krishna is krishna also controlled by them just like we are controlled by material nature is krishna also con no krishna it, it's krishna's energy hmm? 
Just like if you have a dog, the dog may be very fierce to other people, but he's very obedient to his master. Whatever the master says, the dog will do. So material nature is like that. The modes of nature, they come from Krishna, but they don't affect Krishna. They affect us, but they don't affect Krishna. Krishna is above the modes. It's his nature, his energy, again. And Prabhupada gives an example, just like the king, the lawmaker, is not subject to that law. Is it clear? Okay. We'll go ahead. And then, okay. Then we hear about the different modes, the different uh, varnas. The different varnas and ashrams. So the brahmana, the symbol of the mode of goodness. The kshatriya, the mode of passion. The vaishya, mixed passion and ignorance. And the sudra, ignorance. What about animal life? Well, animal life, that will be even lower than ignorance. That's even lower. So human beings, we have the chance, we want to elevate ourselves, we want to, we should try to come up to, to the mode of goodness and then go on to pure goodness, to transcend even the modes of nature. That's the idea. We want to transcend the material nature. So we should come up to the Brahminical platform, the mode of goodness, and then go on from there to pure goodness. Yes, someone can read? Oh. By the spell of this illusion, illusory energy, we consider ourselves in terms of this bodily conception of life, and we thus think that we are Americans, Indian, Russian, or Brahmana, Hindu, Muslim, etc. And if we become entangled with the modes of material nature, then we forget the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is behind all these modes. Mm. Right. So the illusory energy, Krishna's Maya, puts us into this illusion that we are the body and we become entangled in the material nature. We think, I'm a Brahmana or I'm a Sudra, whatever. But that's the material nature. Actually, we have our spiritual nature. And we want to come to that spiritual platform. When even those who are in goodness cannot understand beyond the impersonal concept, what hope is there for those in passion and ignorance? When even those who are in goodness, they, can only underst they, they cannot understand anything beyond the impersonal. So what hope is there for those in passion and ignorance? <laughs> so, we answer here, Krishna consciousness is transcendental to all three modes of material nature. And those who are truly established in Krishna consciousness are actually liberated. Yeah, we may be in the mode of passion and ignorance, but there's hope for us. The hope is that we may get the association of devotees, we learn about devotional service, and we can immediately transcend the modes of material nature. And we can become liberated souls. Even in this life, we don't have to wait. We can come immediately to the highest realization. It depends a lot on taking advantage of association. You get association with devotees, and very quickly we can advance. So this is the verse, the 14th verse, another very powerful verse, very important verse, which you should all know. Yes, someone please read and chant the verse. Bhagavad Gita 
This divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. Yes. So, key words to note. Mama Maya. Krishna said, my Maya. And he describes the nature of his Maya, Duratyaya. Very difficult to overcome. So, to get rid of the material nature is not easy. It's very difficult. But then Krishna goes on, he said, if we surrender to him, mam eva ye prapajante, my am etam tarantite. If we just surrender to Krishna, take shelter of Krishna, then very easily we can cross over the material nature. <coughs> we have to take advantage to surrender to Krishna. How to surrender to Krishna, that will be explained as we go on. We're hearing. It begins by hearing. We have to hear about Krishna. We have to hear from the devotees. So material nature, Krishna's energy, very difficult to overcome. But take shelter of Krishna very easily. Daivihi Esha Gunamai. Inferior material nature defined herein as divine nature due to its divine connection and movement by the divine will. Being conducted by divine will, material nature, although inferior, acts so wonderfully in the construction and destruction of the cosmic manifestation. So certainly this material world, it's inferior, right? We said it's uh, apara prakriti, apara prakriti, the inferior material nature, but it's very attractive. There's so many things in the material world which bewilder us. We become very enamored by the objects, by the different pleasures of the material world. And it's all going on under the direction of the divine will. It's Daivi. It's Gunamaya. Daivi is Gunamaya. So divine nature, the divine will. Although it's inferior, it's divine. It's Krishna's energy. So it's, it, because it's Krishna's energy, it acts so wonderfully. We see so many things we, we become bewildered by. They just had a big exhibition. I just heard people were going to Dubai and there was a big exhibition taking place there. And each country of the world, they each had a booth and they were showing the different projects and they used so many different innovations, so much technology. And it, it attracted people from all over the world. People were coming from all over the world just to visit Dubai to, in order to see this exhibition. Each country put up their booth and they had very nice, uh, very uh, incredible displays. And I was hearing, uh, Devotees were telling me His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami went to visit several times because he was thinking how to utilize some of their different innovations in the new temple which is coming up. Just like they're building the temple of the Vedic planetarium here in Mayapur. So we want to make it very wonderful. We want to make it very attractive. And so Maharaj was looking at the different exhibits which they had there and he was thinking how we could incorporate some of these different methods or devices there in our temple of the Vedic planetarium. And so there's so many things in the material world, so wonderful that it's so easy for us to become bewildered. The bright lights and the, the, so many different attractions of the material energy. We have to be very cautious to hold on to Krishna tightly and always remember that behind all of these things is Krishna. 
that it's all his energy. That you, you think these objects of the material world are wonderful. If, you saw, if we were to see what's there in the spiritual world, that is the superior, so much more wonderful. The material world, this world, this is just the, the reflection. This is not the real truth. Okay then, Mama Maya Duratyaya, both the material and spiritual natures, being emanations from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, are eternal. Can you understand how the material energy is eternal? Krishna said, Mama Maya Duratyaya, very difficult to overcome. My Maya is very difficult to overcome. But the material and spiritual nature we know is eternal. Did we know the material nature is also eternal? Yes. Sometimes it's created and manifest, and other times it's unmanifested. But it's always there. Just like you may take the elements of a, you put a building together and you have bricks and cement and glass and wood and things, you put them all together, you build a house. And then later on we may break down the house. We break down the house, but still the elements of the house, they're, they're still existing. And even you may burn everything, but still it, it's existing, it's just transformed into a different way. And so everything is actually eternal. The earth, water, fire, air, ether, it's eternal. But sometimes it's manifest, sometimes it's not. All right, going on. Eternally conditioned souls, Nitya Bada. This is also text 14. We are, you know, there's different types of souls. There's a Nitya Siddha, eternally perfect. And nitya bada. So we are the nitya bada, we are the conditioned souls, nitya bada. Prabhupada explains both the material and spiritual natures, being emanations from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, are eternal. The living entities belong to the eternal, superior nature of the Lord. But due to contamination, by the inferior nature, matter. Their illusion is also eternal. The conditioned soul is therefore called nitya bada or eternally conditioned. No one can trace out the history of his becoming conditioned at a certain date in material history. 714 purport. I hope you can appreciate this point. Nitya Bada, eternally conditioned. Eternal in the sense that we've been conditioned so long that we don't know when it took place, when it began. So therefore it's described as eternally conditioned. But not, it's not that we were always conditioned, but it's just so long ago that we don't know when it began. So it's described as, our condition is described as nitya bada. We don't know exactly when we became conditioned. So can the nitya bada become nitya siddha or nitya mukta? Can it become perfect? Can it become liberated? Yes. Yes, right. Yes, we can. So the nitya bada souls can be liberated. They can be changed. We became conditioned due to contamination of the material energy. We became attracted. So this was a problem. Consequently, his release from the clutches of material nature is very difficult. Even though that material nature is an inferior energy, because material energy is ultimately conducted by the Supreme Will, which the living entity cannot overcome. 
So, very difficult for us to get free from the material energy. How can we get free? We need mercy. Just like if somebody is a prisoner, if you're tied up in ropes, as we said, we're, we're under the material nature. The material nature is gunas, right? There's the gunas, the ropes. We're tied up. But if somebody comes and cuts the ropes, then you get free. You need somebody to come and untie you. And so, this is how we get free from the material energy. Otherwise, very difficult. But you get the mercy of the devotees and then they, we get free of the material energy. Could someone read this for me? Originally conditioned souls, Nitya Vada. Devotional service or Krishna consciousness can help one gain such release. Krishna being the lord of the illusory energy can order this insurmountable energy to release the conditioned soul. He orders this release out of his causeless mercy on the surrendered soul and out of his paternal affection for the living entity, who is originally a beloved son of the Lord. Therefore, surrender unto the lotus feet of the Lord is the only means to get free from the clutches of the stringent material nature. Bhagavad Gita 7.14 Okay. So surrender unto the Lord. That's how we get free. So how do we surrender to the Lord? Usually we surrender through the devotee. So material energy can release us because it's under the control of Krishna and Krishna's representative, they can release us from the material energy. All right, so we've finished. This is the objectives, what we covered. Right? Would someone like to tell me what was the significance of Maya Sakta Mana? Someone, please. I hope you've learned. Yes, Maya Sakta Mana. What's this? How is it significant? Mind attached to Krishna. So, why is it significant in the practice of yoga? Uh, with the mind attached to the Lord, we can know the Lord in, in full, free from all doubts. Okay, any, anything else? Uh, the example given was by uh, Ambarish Maharaj, who, yeah. He was uh, engaging his, his, uh, uh, in hearing, uh, his out of the nine days of bhakti, hearing is the most uh, important of all. Why? Why is it the most important? Uh, it cleanses the heart of uh, all the uh, material desires. You were uh, quoting the shloka, Shrinvatam Sakakar, Ravana Kirtanam, it cleanses the heart. It starts from uh, everything starts from hearing. Yes, everything starts. Remember, at the end of six chapters, we heard the top of the yoga system, of the yoga ladder was bhakti no. yoga, right? Bhakti yoga. Right. And so bhakti yoga starts with hearing about Krishna. Right. And then the significance of yatatam apisadanam kaschim mam veti tattvataha. Of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. The significance in relation to Krishna's instruction on the yoga system, that it's, it's not such an easy thing easy thing to know Krishna, that it's easy for people to understand the not the body, that's not so hard. 
But to get people to actually understand Krishna in relation to Krishna, that is more difficult. So, most, many people, they're, 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 most people are just simply busy in material life, they have no interest. But of those who are a little serious, they may achieve perfection, they know they're not the body. So that's the beginning of Self-Realization. But to go on to know Krishna is more difficult. To actually come to understanding the position of Lord Krishna as the Supreme Absolute Truth, then that's less common, more confidential. Okay, and then finally we spoke about the nitya bada, eternally conditioned soul. The nitya bada, we're conditioned because of daivi hi esha guna mai, the divine nature of Krishna's maya is so powerful, bewildered all of us. Duratyaya, very difficult to overcome. So this way we became nitya bada. We became conditioned souls, but not that we have to remain conditioned souls. We can be liberated if we take to Krishna consciousness. All right, so we've covered this first lesson. Are there any questions? As Bihari Prabhu, you have a question? No, I think I forgot to Looks like no questions, Guru Maharaj. No questions, okay. So we'll meet you tomorrow then, same time. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Maharaj. Pancha Kalpo.